express our sadness and our grief, please know that we are here for you and we're all grieving with you. I want to thank Governor Yunkin, Attorney General Miares, and Secretary of Education Gadara for reaching out directly to me today and for their offers of support. Our community is grateful for your help. I also want to thank my colleague presidents at many, many institutions. Thank you for your messages of support. We know that you're standing here with us tonight as well. What happened here today is senseless and tragic. It's heartbreaking. Our anguish is felt so deeply because the entire Bridgewater College community is a family too. And that will be our greatest strength in the days and weeks ahead. Our students and faculty and staff will grieve together and we'll take care of each other. This tragedy will be investigated and analyzed and reviewed in due time and that work is already underway by others. But for me, for us, for the Bridgewater College family, this moment should be about care and compassion. People we love have lost people they love. I'd ask you all to keep JJ and John and especially their families in your prayers. I'm Corinne Geller with the Virginia State Police, and we're going to provide you with an update um, on the, uh, the investigation, which is underway by the Virginia State Police Bureau of Criminal Investigations Culpeper Field Office. The incident began at approximately 1.20 Tuesday afternoon when a Bridgewater College police officer and a Bridgewater College campus safety officer responded to a call for a suspicious male individual located on the grounds of Memorial Hall here on the Bridgewater campus. After a brief interaction with the man, the subject opened fire and shot both officers. The man then fled on foot. Immediately following a 911 call, uh, personnel from the Bridgewater College Police Department, the Town of Bridgewater Police Department, Virginia State Police, Rockingham County Sheriff's Office, Augusta County Sheriff's Office, the Town of Dayton, Virginia Police Department, and the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources Conservation Police immediately responded to the campus to assist. Search efforts were immediately underway across the campus. A man fitting the shooter's description was located on Riverside Drive off campus in the Town of Bridgewater. He then waded through the river and onto an island in the North River, which is located also in the town of Bridgewater. Harrisonburg Police, Rockingham County Sheriff's Office deputies, and Virginia State Police Special Agents took the individual into custody without further incident. The man, identified as Alexander Wyatt Campbell, 27 years of age, was suffering from a non-life-threatening gunshot wound. He was transported to the Rockingham Memorial Hospital, where he was treated and released today. Now, state police were still working to determine if he was shot by the Bridgewater College police officer or if he suffered a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Multiple firearms associated with Campbell have been recovered as evidence as this ongoing investigation. Campbell's last known address was Ashland, Virginia. Virginia State Police, we have charged Campbell with a total of four felonies, two felony counts of capital murder, one felony count of first-degree murder, and one felony count of use of a firearm in the commission of a felony. He is being held without bond at the Rockingham County Jail. We are also asking anyone out there or on campus who has any information about this incident, any information about Campbell, or who may have videotaped or took photo images of this incident, to please share that with state police. And we have an, uh, an email address of VSP HTCS, so that stands for Virginia State Police, VSP, HTCS, at VSP dot Virginia spelled out dot gov. We also have the FBI and the ATF here assisting us with this ongoing investigation. And despite the valiant efforts of those officers who responded to the scene and of the paramedics, unfortunately, the two officers did succumb to their injuries on campus. And our hearts and prayers definitely go out to Chief Franklin and all the men and women of his department uh, because we know this is a very difficult time. And of course we have many of the agencies represented here today. You will see they're wearing the black band over their badges and that is out of respect and care for the officers themselves. At this time we will take some questions. Because he was in a, a location that he shouldn't have been and as a result uh, some employees noticed him, actually startled him, and that's when they notified the campus police that they had an individual that shouldn't have been at this location, 
and that's why they responded. Uh, we're not commenting on his status uh, as far as related to the university. When you say that you recovered weapons, is that during the scene or in his home? Uh, the, the weapons were recovered during the course of the investigation here on campus and off campus. Can you say how many? No, we're not releasing that at this time. Was he staying with those weapons when those initial persons saw him? Um, that's still part of the investigation when we're working and getting those witness accounts. And one reason why we are asking for folks to come forward if they have other photos of him, obviously he fled on foot. So he was out of sight for that time period. Um, but during the course of the investigation and retracing his footsteps is what's led us to locating those weapons. Did he appear to be intoxicated or under the influence of drugs? Um, at this time, I don't have that information right now. Where did the 911 call come from after the officers responded? We actually received several 911 calls. They come into, and I'm correct here, the Rockingham County uh, dispatch comes into there. And of course, we're sort of still sorting through those. Um, you know, it was, a, it was right in the middle of the day uh, here on campus, and uh, so we did have several people who heard uh, and, of course, witnessed it and immediately called 911. When you say he should have been there, what do you mean by that? That will probably come out in, in the days to come, but at this time he was, he was not supposed to be in this particular location associated with Memorial Hall, and, you know, we always tell folks if you see something suspicious, let others know, which is exactly what they did, and we're very appreciative of that. Um, we're not going to comment on that at this time. Do we know a motive of this charge of why he did this? No, that's still under investigation as well. Did officers have a chance to defend themselves, or how did that initial interaction go? That's also part of our ongoing investigation is to determine, like I said, we still don't know at this point if the gunshot wound was, uh, you know, an exchange uh, between Campbell and the officer or if it was self-inflicted. So that's still very much, as you went, we're only a couple of hours really into this investigation. Uh, we have multiple scenes, obviously, from when the shooting occurred and from where he was taken into custody. And so therefore, you know, it's still a very complex and very active investigation at this time. Can you say where he was shot? Uh, we're not releasing that either at this point. So well, just non-life-threatening. if you will, across the river, how was he brought back to a shore? Was he enticed or did investigators go and get him? They went through the water. It's, it's only about knee deep, and it's very shallow. So they actually, all those, I think there's an image floating around of him on the island with several law enforcement. They responded, went through the water, and took him into custody without further incident and simply walked him back. Was he still armed at that point? We're not commenting at that at this point. Did the men how intoxicated? Was there any more recovery? We're still looking into that as well at this time. As far as you know, just the one guy involved? Yes. Right now, based on the evidence we have at this stage in the investigation, this was an isolated event and only involves Campbell. What agency shot at the suspect? I'm sorry? What agency may have shot at the suspect? What agency shot at the Yeah. The, the only encounter he would have had, no other officers who responded discharged their weapons in the course of this entire event. Uh, we're still trying to determine if there was an exchange of gunfire between the Bridgewater uh, College police officer and Campbell. Mm -hmm. We're looking into that as well. At the time of the interaction, was campus, you know, bustling, pretty busy? It was about lunchtime. Or I don't know. I, Dr. Yeah. Mission, if you want to refer yeah, to what I mean, your campus a, is like. It was a typical day of classes. So so lots of folks outside. Um, there was in class at that time, so mostly would have been in classes, but there would be there are always people walking around. Dr. Mushi, can we ask you some questions? Um, so if you can step up closer. We talked to some students today. Yeah, so Bridgewater is a, it, I said it's a family and I don't use that term lightly. I mean, it's an academic community, but we care about each other. They were very well known to students. Um, they were always seen together. Their relationship was very close as well. And so it's meaningful. So we feel this very deeply. You said they were best friends. Like they, had uh, they were very close friends, yeah, um, in each other, in, in John's wedding. So that's, they were, they were very close, yeah. How many officers were on campus on Bridgewater? Uh, yeah. Chief, do you have the number? Yes, sir. We have a total of um, six officers, count myself, and John Painter, Officer Painter, and four safety all campus safety officers. What exactly is a safety officer considered? Uh, yeah, they like a security officer. Security. Yes, sir. And they go through DCJ, uh, Department of Criminal Justice Services. Um, they go through a certification process to be a campus safety officer versus a full-fledged police officer. Obviously, goes through an academy and graduates through. So any. 
the police officer, sorry, the police officer would have been issued a sidearm. The campus safety police officer would not be issued a sidearm. Correct, yes. No, he would have been, yeah. He's not issued, the, yes, the campus safety officer is not issued a sidearm, okay? Is the campus prepared for free counseling to help the students who may be traumatized? Yeah, no, we've already, we've already begun that, and so we've reached out to other institutions, and again, as I said, to the state government, they're offering resources as well, and we've already planned a number of things, and that'll be, that'll be ongoing. Classes tomorrow? No, classes are canceled tomorrow as well. Um, we'll review that tomorrow. Dr. Buschman, if you see students on campus tomorrow, what would you, what will you say to them? I'll tell them that I'm thinking about them, that we should take care of each other, that we've lost somebody very close to ourselves, very close to our family. Where is Campbell being held? He's being held without bond at the Rockingham County Jail. And I'll be sending out a press release with the statements that I read. We'll be pushing that out, also posting on our Facebook page and our Twitter account. And I'm also trying to obtain the mugshot for you guys as well. Does so. anybody remind student it was um, when other officers arrived, except for the 911 call? Almost immediately. That's, that's something, as soon as that sort of call comes in, law enforcement, as you can see from all over, you go. That's just period. No matter where you're at, you drop and go. Does Campbell have a prior criminal history? Uh, Virginia law actually prohibits us from releasing criminal history records. Uh, you can search that online at courts.va, no, courts.state.va.us. Sorry if I missed it. The two officers, how long were they uh, with the campus here? The, uh, the chief is actually going to be placing a statement on his Facebook page, and that has some biographical information for you on that, okay? Do we know the types of weapons that were used? We do. We're just not releasing that information at this time. So, Okay, one more question. Yes. Well, it's we're just a couple hours into this. It's all I mean, it is heartbreaking. It's taken us all back. And we've right now, I think we're caught up in the moment, making sure we take care of each other and especially take care of our students, our campus police and safety officers and and, and the families involved in this. But this is going to take some time. But that is our greatest strength. We will take care of each other. And that's how we'll get through this together. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate your call. I said we'll be I'll be pushing that out by email through our distribution list and of course posting on our social media as well. That'll be our last update for tonight. We won't have any new information to release tonight. Okay? We'll follow up tomorrow with any new information. Question about the charges. You said two capital murder counts, Correct. one first degree murder Correct. count. Two officers shot. So why just one first degree murder count? That's the uh, charges that we've obtained at this point in consultation with the Commonwealth's attorney for Rockingham County. Okay. And just quickly. No, those charges have been placed. He has been charged with that. The incident happened outside, yes? Correct. Were there at any point any other students in and around the area that could have been in danger? I do not believe so, based on the information we have at this time. Fortunately, it, it just happened in that nexus. Um, I'm sure maybe the chill of the day helped not have as many students out on campus. Um, but the encounter was very isolated to that sp specific location. And as soon as the shooting occurred, he fled on foot. So. so we're still, we're still piecing together exactly his movements um, in and around Memorial Hall. And again, that's part of our ongoing investigation, so. Just, just one more for Mr. President. Is the college, or has the college gone through preparation? Unfortunately, this sort of thing has been happening all throughout the country. You talk about the planning for this sort of thing. Is it what's happening here? Yeah, so we have a crisis management uh, team and a plan with all with a number of scenarios and as you say this is one we would hope we'd never have to, to go through but we do have planning for this. Just want to make sure we have the name uh, Alexander Wyatt Campbell spelled. Is it spelled the way it's Yes, spelled? all common spelling. Okay, yes. Thank you mm -hmm. All right. Thank you again guys. We appreciate it. Have a good night.